We start by going deeper on our third top story. Arizona State University gets the go-ahead to open a medical school. Lots of sun devil pride there, but there's much more to this story. Our three state universities are responding to the challenge of fixing the chronic shortage of health care workers in our booming state. If you've tried to find a primary care doctor, a pediatrician, you know what that's like. Joining us today is Fred Duval. He's a former Democratic candidate for governor and chairman-elect of the Arizona Board of Regents, which oversees our three state universities. It was the regents who challenged the state schools to come up with plans to deal with that shortage. Welcome Great. back to Square Off. Thank you. Good to be back. Great to see you. I want to start just with a bit of your personal history. You have a personal connection to the Tucson Medical School at the University of Arizona. Your dad was the founding he, he was dean there. The founding dean 60 years ago brought to Tucson. There was a big competition as to whether the medical school should go to Tucson or to ASU. At the time, it was a kind of a clear decision it should go to Tucson. Uh, but at the time, the regents in 62 hired my dad. We got started, but they said, inevitably, ASU will end up with a medical school. 60, day, 60 years later, here we are. Here we are. So you're present at the birth of a, a second medical right. school in Arizona. Exactly. And we've had a, a few more as well. Right. So give us, if you can, a real-world ex example of the kind of chronic staffing shortages sure. that we've seen in the healthcare industry. Yeah, uh, and there's a slew of them, but I'll give you a couple top lines. We are in the bottom fifth in the country per capita in doctors per capita. We are 42nd in the country, if, uh, in, the country in nurses per capita. One in three of our hospitals have chronic... Uh, workforce shortages. Three million Arizonans live in an area where they have difficulty accessing primary care. And as you pointed out in your opening sentence, uh, everyone feels it. It's hard to get to a doctor. Once you get to a doctor, you've got a long wait. Uh, and then what happens is too many of our, our uh, citizens end up in the emergency room to get primary care, which is the worst possible design. And the universities have come up with ambitious, ambitious plans or are coming up with them. ASU, in typical Michael Crow style, right. has very big, yeah. big ideas. Give us a summary of what each is looking at. Sure, can do. Um, so the goal is to grow the Tucson facility to a fully formed what we call academic medical center, which is world class clinicians in each of the key areas driving quality care really upgrade that as a destination uh, college of medicine uh, bring ASU's college of medicine along it will be different than a typical college of medicine it'll be embedded in uh, engineering and technology which is where it, medicine is going uh, and then NAU which has a long-standing uh, history of producing nurses will be asked to significantly grow its allied health and nurses program so ASU will be turning out doctors eventually. Uh, U of A is ramping up right. its output. Will Humble, uh, who I think you know, former sure. public health, service, health services director for Arizona, he says the state needs more than medical school graduates. It needs the residencies right. in hospitals to keep them in Arizona rather than having, their, having them get their degrees in go elsewhere. That's right. What's being done in that area? Uh, Bram, th this is the barrier to entry, and it's absolutely true. I mean, money will be a barrier to entry. These are expensive. It costs a lot of money to graduate uh, a, a physician. But these residencies, which you both have in state and which draw people to Arizona, is, is essentially how you get people here and to stay here. They are allocated by the federal government uh, with an, an ancient formula which penalizes the growth states in favor of the traditional states uh, in the east and other big states. We've got to fix that in order to fix this problem. So you're saying we would need our members of Congress and senators to do something about this? Uh, you know, I don't know whether uh, HHS can do it themselves without congressional authority, but it will require federal help. Uh, and then our hospitals then will make the request for additional graduate positions, which will lead to more physicians staying in state. And you're talking again about a range of healthcare workers. What works, what kind of incentives are needed to help them go to rural areas or simply to help them stay here? Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of practice areas to be had because obviously we're a growing population, so that will fix itself. The rural Arizona challenge is, is really, really difficult. Telemedicine proves to be one of the really big answers. We, we, what we need to do, and you know, governors of both parties and the legislature has made investments in broadband. If we can assure that we have telemedicine options, uh, available throughout our state of Arizona, that will go a long way because they, they really do suffer the most from the inaccessibility of primary care. And what about, you mentioned primary care, directing doctors to primary care or pediatrics. You know, we saw here in, uh, in Phoenix this past week a major, the country's largest health insurer threatening to cast Phoenix Children's Hospital out of 
out of right. network and we learned just how tough it is to find good pediatric docs, let alone the specialty docs at PCH. So what's being done to steer doctors to those specialties? Right. Uh, we're going to try and incentivize them. Hospitals are trying to incentivize them. But then the other trick in this is how do we elevate non-physicians but who has a variety of other wraparound skill sets, allied health professionals, in order to do more of the services which we've relied upon primary physicians to do. And that's a less expensive workaround to get to the same destination. Interesting. So let's go back to the ASU Medical School yeah. that got a lot of the attention. Yeah. Set expectations about how far along that is and when it might begin turning out doctors. Right. As I mentioned, it will be unique in that it will be embedded in the engineering school. There's only a couple schools in the country that have tried to do this. No one will do it with the velocity of Michael Crow and ASU, to be sure. Uh, but it's a new form of, of uh, a medical degree. Uh, it Because it's embedded in technology and engineering, it's expensive. It'll take some time. Uh, Michael Crow is very good at finding resources. We will need state help. We will need many private partners. Then the real rub is accreditation, and it'll take you know, a number of years to get accredited. But, uh, you know, you got to get started. Uh, and we have, we've made the commitment. We've allocated $30 million. The governor has come up with an additional 15 to sort of ramp up the planning. Uh, and we will get to the point of making the application for accreditation just as fast as we can. Okay. We will all be watching closely. Fred thank Duval, you. thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it.